Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. Canoe U.S. Army Light Tactical Vehicle First Drive Review, Mill Spec Lifestyle. Canoe is serious about making its skateboard chassis broadly adaptable to widely varying use cases. To prove that point, last July the company won a contract to bid for the U.S. Army's commercial electric vehicle program, which has resulted in the vehicle you see here. It was scheduled for delivery to the Army for testing on December 1st, but we got a chance to take it for a spin a few days prior while also reviewing the civilian 2024 Canoe Lifestyle Vehicle. Commercial Electric Vehicle Refresher Unlike the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, JLTV, program, a Joint Army-Marine Corps effort tasked with procuring the next generation of armored, all-purpose vehicles and companion trailers, in the Infantry Squad Vehicle, ISV, program, an Army project for a Jeep-like battle taxi, the Commercial Electric Vehicle program is designed to help the Army learn how it can incorporate EVs into its fleets. While the Army has purchased thousands of Oshkosh JLTVs and ordered about 650 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2-based GM Defense ISVs, it's ordering just a handful of Canoe LTVs and Lordstown Military Electric Vehicles, MEVs, for testing. As GM does with the ISV, Canoe's entry reuses the vast majority of the chassis parts that underpin its last-mile delivery LDV and lifestyle vehicle vans with certain modifications. Chassis Changes With a target curb weight of about 5,300 pounds, the prototype we drove weighed closer to 6,400, and a substantial payload capacity, no composite transverse leaf spring would do, so the suspension is upgraded to air springs. Unique control arms front and rear help increase the ride height and suspension travel along with the larger 265-65 or 19 off-road military spec Goodyear Wrangler tires. The max steering angle is curtailed somewhat too, though the turning radius remains impressively compact. Mill spec body. The regular cab pickup body and flatbed rear are all made of steel and wrapped in carbon Kevlar for light arms bullet resistance. The cab easily accommodates two soldiers fully geared up with quad holsters and the large, rectangular doors make climbing in and out a breeze. Doors to the gear tunnel double as steps, as they do on a Rivian or 1T, and when open they roughly have the climb up to the flatbed, making it an easy two-step climb onto the deck. Aviation tie-downs can accept a variety of loads, from standard construction plywood, to seating for eight troops, to a drone launch pad or other tactical equipment to suit particular missions. When configured for drone control, the open space in front of the passenger seat is ideal for securing the drone operator's controls. Mounting the spare tire immediately behind the driver provides extra ballistic protection. The flatbed features drop-down fences to ease loading of up to two pallets. And it's possible to have a tool drawer or other slide-out features accessible from the back. No sound or heat signature. As with the proposed hydrogen-powered version of the GM Defense ISV, the electric canoe runs nearly silent and emits little or no heat signature. Plus, its rounded forms are said to stand out less than square ones when viewed in night vision glasses. And naturally this electric truck features 120 and 240-volt outlets to power equipment. So how does it drive? Its two-motor all-wheel drive powertrain more than doubles the power output of the lifestyle vehicle we sampled, but almost a ton of extra weight and taller tires mean it feels way less than twice as quick. Still, it whizzes up to speed silently and swiftly, and it absolutely shares the lifestyle vehicle's quick, nimble feel, which comes courtesy of Canoe's 1.2-turn bywire steering system and square steering wheel. Bumps are absorbed just as smoothly and air springs ensure that this will remain true as payloads increase. How does an electric tactical vehicle compare to a diesel? Driven almost exactly two years apart, we can definitely confirm the two-motor roughly 600 HP-600 LBFT electric canoe feels way quicker accelerating than the 275 HP-420 LBFT diesel GM ISV. Our canoe drive was completely on pavement and the ISV drive was off-road, 
but the ZR2's off-road competition history suggests it might be the better equipped for high-speed Baja-style bashing. And if troop transport is the primary mission, we'd feel more comfortable riding in the ISV, which offers removable roll cage protection for all passengers. But in any situation where stealth is of importance, such as the Army's upcoming electric scout vehicle program, there's no topping the silent, cool running of an electric vehicle. And as for enduring 20,000 miles per year for a decade with potentially spotty maintenance, as the Army requirements dictate, two electric motors with single-speed gear reduction transmissions should prove more robust and require far less maintenance than a diesel engine, six-speed automatic transmission, transfer case, and axles. Will the Army bite? Given Canoe's heavy corporate interest in complete life-cycle planning with emphasis on durability, plus its advantage in stealth and apparent lack of mainstream vehicle manufacturer competition in this field now. Though military supply powerhouse Oshkosh has readied an EJLTV hybrid, we're bullish on Canoe's chances of landing a military contract for the LTV.